Human beings are fascinated by the extremes in nature. It's part of our natural curiosity to try to map the limits of what exists in the world around us and that curiosity goes crazy when it comes to which animals were the biggest. Part of the thrill of science is learning how nature doesn't bow to the supposed limits and expectations that we as humans place upon it. That is abundantly clear when it comes to sauropod dinosaurs. In this video, we'll find out how big the biggest sauropod ever likely would have been. Sauropods were in a class of their own in the contest of terrestrial fauna. The next largest land animals, huge elephant relatives like Paleoloxodon nematicus, topped out at between 15 and 20 tons. While titanic by today's standards, that's small fry compared to the bigger titanosaurs, which were like walking high-rises. The most recent peer-reviewed mass estimates for Argentinosaurus, widely regarded as the biggest sauropod for which we have decent remains, indicate that the few specimens we have weighed between 70 and 80 metric tons. Lost fragmentary giants like the Indian titanosaur Fangorn Rhesaurus may have been around 120 tons or higher, although now only known from photographs. So now we know, based on available evidence, how big megasauropods appear to have gotten. But our sample size of sauropods is tiny, and it would be foolish to assume that we found even close to the biggest taxon. So what was the biggest that sauropods could plausibly get? Where was their limit really? Fortunately, physics may hold the answer. Yuriki Hokanen, a biophysicist at the University of Helsinki, analyzed the relationship of bone strength relative to muscle mass required for terrestrial locomotion. He calculated that the upper mass limit for land animals is well over 100,000 kilograms and allowed for the possibility of evolutionary adaptation pushing that limit even further. After his exhaustive analysis, Hokanen concluded that the highest possible mass for an animal that could still move on land using legs was 600,000 kilograms. Another 2023 study mentioned that circulatory and musculoskeletal issues commonly cited as limits on terrestrial animal size are being discovered to no longer pose much of a problem when it comes to sauropods. So what does that mean for a 600 ton beast? What kind of ecological pressure could have created such an animal? The truth is that I don't think any animal approached 600 tons, not because it wasn't skeletally possible since Hokanen's calculations seem to indicate that it was but because we don't know of any reason why an animal would have an evolutionary need to even get close to that size. The trade-offs would be enormous, pun intended. The strain on an animal's heart, the circulatory pathways it would need to develop, the excruciating slowness that would come with such a weight. It would do more harm than good to be that big, and it would need to eat so much that no ecosystem could support it. Not to mention that if an animal ever did approach that weight, it probably wouldn't be using a sauropod body plan. They weren't designed to be quite that big. So if 600 tons is out of the question for megasauropods, what's a realistic upper limit for the biggest land animals ever? Ecology may save us, or physics cannot. For warning, this section of the video is calculating a hypothetical maximum size for the biggest sauropod genera. It's all theoretical and we have not discovered a sauropod this big. This is speculation. That said, it's speculation fueled by months of research and a large number of previous studies. So let's dive in. As mentioned earlier, the sample size of sauropod dinosaurs is tiny. Most species are only known from a handful of individual skeletons of varying completeness, making establishing a true average mass for each one pretty much impossible. So for simplicity's sake, I took 19 large-bodied sauropods and generated an average mass from multiple peer-reviewed estimates for them. A 75-ton average for Argentinosaurus, for example, came from combining the estimates from six published studies to get a general range for how heavy it likely was. For argument's sake, we're saying that a normal adult Argentinosaurus would have been around that mass. In real life, it could have been higher or lower. Ideally, the best way to calculate the top end of a sauropod's mass would be to use another well-studied sauropod genus as a proxy. This genus would have a well-sampled population ranging from hatchling to old adult and would have comprehensive histological studies done on every specimen, telling us how old it was so we could directly compare fully grown adults. Unfortunately, that information doesn't exist. I did spend several months collecting Camarasaurus measurements from previous studies in museums, including BYU and the University of Utah, but because we don't know the age of all the specimens, they can't be used to establish an adult size range. The next best thing is to look at the populations of related animals that are well studied. After speaking with several sauropod experts, including Mike Taylor, Brian Curtis, Matt Weddle, and Ray Wilhite, I decided that the best analogs for sauropod dinosaurs would be the following. Other non-avian dinosaurs with large sample sizes, avian dinosaurs, and large herbivorous mammals. 
Based on the conversations I had with the experts, along with studies done on sauropod bone structure and growth patterns, indicated that these groups would be the best to use for population dynamics comparison. The large-bodied mammal species, ranging from gorillas to giraffes to elephants, had an average to maximum ratio of 2.06. That means that the heaviest measured member of the species was just over twice the mass of an average adult. I ignored sexual dimorphism for the project since it's an extraordinarily difficult thing to identify in fossils in the best of cases, so male and female weights were all lumped together in one. Avian dinosaurs, in this case limited to six species of large modern birds, had an average to maximum ratio of 1.67, which was lower than the mammals. Fellow non-avian dinosaurs with the smallest sample size of four species demonstrated a ratio of 1.94. When we apply those ratios to sauropods, we get some mind-boggling numbers. The largest hypothetical Argentinosaurus would be 125 tons based on birds, 145 tons based on non-avian dinosaurs, and 154 tons based on large herbivorous mammals. It's important to note that, if anything, these numbers are underestimates, since the ratios were obtained from relatively small sample sizes of the taxa used to create them. The true variation in an animal population is going to be bigger than the individuals we happen to have measured. And again, this is speculation, but it's also incredibly cool and fun to think about. What more reason do we need to ask questions like these? Of course, this data set will gradually become more refined as time goes on, and new discoveries will continue to change our understanding of these magnificent animals. It's clear that there's plenty more to learn about the biggest land animals ever. When we do, you'll know where to find the info, right here on Vivinen Paleontology Evolved. This video was the brief summary of a study that I performed for my undergraduate research in biology, presented at the 2024 Utah Conference for Undergraduate Research. Supplementary data and the paper itself is linked in the description if you're interested. Huge thanks go out to Ariana Harrington, my amazing research mentor, as well as Brian Curtis, Ray Wilhite, Mike Taylor, and Matt Weddle, who were all influential on the creation and success of this project. The folks at the BYU and University of Utah collections were friendly and helpful. And last but not least, thanks to my incredible wife slash co-author who traveled with me from museum to museum to measure sauropod bones. And thank you for watching! Join the channel so I can continue to bring you paleontology videos and check out the first megasauropod video here. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.